Hey guys, I'm over back again. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 after using it for two weeks. I was previously using the Google Pixel 6 and switching from the Pixel 6 to the Galaxy Z Flip 4 is definitely a significant upgrade. You're getting a larger screen. The Z Flip 4 is a 6.7 inch screen and it is at 1200 nits at peak brightness. So it is a noticeable difference in terms of brightness going from a budget phone to a high-end $1000 phone. I'm usually the guy that would argue 120 hertz is not that noticeable, but you can actually tell the difference in brightness right away after switching from a budget mid-range phone. But if you're coming from a Galaxy Z Flip 3, it honestly isn't that much of a difference. The battery life is slightly better compared to last year. You get some more functionality on the outer display. But other than that, it's not too much of a difference. You do get the latest and greatest Snapdragon 8 Gen Plus 1. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not going to feel too much of a difference from this phone compared to the previous version. If you are new to folding phones and curious to learn more, stay tuned for a full deep dive review. When I first hold the phone, it actually feels very premium and nice in the hand. And when you open it up, it feels long and narrow but compared to last year from what i remember it does feel a little bit more like a regular phone once it is opened up i remember last year it was a little bit on the narrow side and once you start installing all the apps and using it it just feels like a regular phone once it is opened up but once you close the phone that's where the style factor come in i had this phone at work folded and just left on a table Definitely had a lot of questions from my coworkers and people asking about the phone. It looks nice if it is just sitting there. So it definitely does catch a lot of attention if that's something you're looking for. And it's a fun phone to use. You can open a phone when you're using it. When you're done, you can close the phone. So there's a nostalgic factor with the flipping phones. Back in the days, everybody had those Razer phones when they were cool. Some of the things I do recommend to do first when you get the phone is to turn on always on display. By default, you have to tap to activate it. I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather just have it always be on so I can just glance without having to touch it. And I will recommend registering the fingerprint scanner as well. The size scanner is super convenient. Face scanner is hit or miss for me for some reason. I feel like the Apple version always work a little bit better, but on Android, it is not perfect so i would recommend the fingerprint scanner but you do have the option to use both if you choose to and typically when samsung release a new phone the best time to order it is during the pre-order phase at this point it already passed that phase but just to keep in mind for the next release the s series is around the corner or you can wait till the next year for the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Typically, the pre-ordering period comes with great deals. If you already have existing phones, you can trade it in, especially if they are newer. You do get some good discounts and credits there. Samsung will usually give you some bonus credits that you can order accessory. They range anywhere from $100 to $200. So those are always nice. In the last few years, they have included storage upgrade as well. Typically, when you buy the phone, it would start off at 128 gig, but since I ordered it during the pre-order period, I got the 256 gigabyte for the price of the 128. In addition to that, they also threw in a case as well, which is nice. So if you're contemplating about ordering the next phone, just do all your research now and wait for the next pre-order period. I'm pretty sure these phones will go on sale throughout the years as well. So just keep an eye out. In terms of the phone itself, some of the things I do like is it does have a very loud speaker, which is pretty standard across all of the premium Galaxy lines. And I do like that you have to make a conscious decision to close the phone when you're not using it. And it does come in handy as well. If you don't want to be distracted and just want to put your phone away, you can just close it and leave it like that. You still see an orange dot on the outside which indicate there's a notification 
I would have liked to see a little bit more information around that, but I know you can just tap on the phone, swipe, and see the more, see the notification that way. But for now, it served more of like a smartwatch interface. It's just a tiny screen with very limited information available. And if you want to see more, then you have to open up the phone. I do like that the memory management is not super aggressive like the Pixel 6a. I know it's probably not a fair comparison for a mid-range to a high-end phone, but that was the previous phone I was coming from. But on a Pixel 6a, when I'm switching between apps and games, it will constantly stop and restart. So it is super annoying when I'm replying to a text and I come back to the, my previous game. I would need to wait for the whole game to boot up again. Compare that to the Z Flip 4. I don't have any issues like that, which is nice so I, will, I want to point that out. In terms of battery life, I feel that it is a significant increase compared to last year and I also have a quicker fast charging as well. I believe they bumped it up to 20 watt or so. The Z Flip 3 was using ancient technology at 15 watt for whatever reasons. So in terms of battery life, it is similar to the Galaxy S22 maybe a little bit better but it's definitely better than the z flip 3 from last year i do like that the phone does have high refresh rate and basically all the premium features you expect from an expensive phone that costs a thousand bucks camera is decent as well it is not top of the line like the ultra series or the iphone 13 pro max but it is more than enough for most average consumers some things i don't like about this phone is it does take some effort to open it up and it required two hand. I mean, you can practice flipping it and restoring the phone across the room. But something about me having to dig into the phone and then flipping it open just doesn't quite feel right. I wish they made it a little bit easier to open with one hand, where there is some button that just flips it open, like the sidekick back in the day, or make the hinge not as tight I guess but I'm not sure if that's going to make the phone feel more cheap and flimsy so usually when I'm using it and the phone is closed I just wish that there was a screen on the outside that's bigger with more functionality that I can use like a normal phone just like how the the fold series is you can use the front screen like a normal phone and then if you want an even bigger screen and you just open it up. I wish it had all that functionality instead of just a limited smartwatch interface type of screen. And then another downside about having any of these folding phone is you have to answer the question about the crease when you open the phone. But that's just a cost you have to pay for being an early adopter, I guess. I know the early days when I had the Galaxy Notes, I remember people were always asking me, is the phone too big? I never felt like those notes were too big. They were, were the perfect size for me even back then. And now they have become the norm. So they're big until they're not. But for now, you kind of have to take all the punches until it become the norm. Pretty sure the crease will go away over time. For now, it's just some technological issues. I know some of the Chinese manufacturers have found a way to reduce the crease or even eliminate it. But for now, I think Samsung choose to keep it because it does have water resistant and they haven't found a way to make it water resistant and crease free yet. But I have no doubt with time, it'll get better. Samsung does project that the Z series will outsell the Galaxy S series by 2025. And I can almost see a case for that as well. It's definitely fun to use. It looks cool, it's stylish, and they got a lot going for it. For now, I think the $1,000 price tag is still too high, but given all the incremental update that they made to the battery, the faster charging, and just minor tweaks here and there, at least I'm glad they did not increase the price, but I would love to see the price drop to around $700 or so. That would be the perfect entry level prices for more people to start adopting flipping phones all right there you guys have it that is my full review of the galaxy z flip 4 if you're looking for something new and stylish you can close the phone when you're not using it but other than that if you're just opening up the phone and using it it just feels like a regular phone so you're looking for a change and want something new i would recommend it but if you want something safe, I guess just stick with the iPhone or Galaxy. Can't really go wrong with those. But this is progress in the making. So I'm curious to see how these folding phones will develop throughout the years. 
Let me know what you guys think about the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you guys next time.